all deaf. Can't hear anything. Yeah, we can we can hear you. Oh, okay. I just okay, good. All right. So um this meeting was posted appropriately two days ago at the uh, town clerk's office. Um, so I, I, I would like to hear a motion to meeting minutes of the meeting for January 6th, January 20th. I don't have them, Dr. McLaughlin. Oh, my so apologies. Okay. I so can't approve them then. So what are we going to do first? We're going to do the public health updates first to hear a motion to meeting minutes of the meeting. That makes sense. Yes, I think you're right. All right. You want to hear my that want to start with the nurses report, if that's all right. OK, all right. Yes, it's so, a good tune. It's going to be great. Sorry about that. No worries. All right. So let's um, I'm going to start with non COVID related uh, diseases. The this is from uh, last meeting through today. The hepatitis B, we had one, uh, two probable cases, hep B, one uh, probable hep C, the one tuberculosis, but it's a, a latent, and then influenza, we got three cases, and it's still actually influenza A right now, um, and that's actually down from the, you know, I, I don't know if you guys remember, but back in October, we kind of started early. Usually we don't start until, you know, right around this time of year. And it, this is when it starts to ramp up. But this year it started early and we had, uh, you know, a 10 to 15 cases early on. And then we're down right now to three cases. So that's, that's pretty awesome. And as I said, it's all... Uh, a and I don't have the exact breakdown, but it's mainly in um, these three were in kids. Um, could, could, the, uh, could that be due to masking? It very well could be. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, because we weren't doing masking in the uh, and if you remember back in 2020, seems like ages ago. The, you know, when everything was shut down and we had um, the mask mandate everywhere, I don't know if you remember, but I, I think we had one case of flu in Danvers and very few, you know, in the state of Massachusetts. So, yeah, I mean, it, it makes sense, definitely makes sense. Um, all right, and then moving right along to COVID cases. So again, um, my numbers, are, I usually run on Thursday evening, somewhere around 9, 9.30 at night. So this one was run earlier. I think I ran it somewhere around hmm, 4.30, 5 o'clock today. So we have, and, and I don't know if you guys remember, but last month what I did was where the reports were able to break it down. So they do 18 or older at this point, we can run a report under 18, we can even run a report under five. So this month we've got uh, 116 for 18 or over, and then under 18 was 14 cases. So, you know, I mean, on the surface, it looks like it definitely went down. It definitely did decrease. And our positivity rate is down to 12% versus last week when I gave you guys, it was 16%. But I just need you to make sure, uh, understand that this is only lab confirmed cases. So these are our antigen, our rapid test and our PCRs, and they are lab Confirmed. So this does not include home testing. There is no way for us to document our home tests. I, you know, I mean, I get calls. So and and I started kind of hand tracking them, but then that got labor intensive. So we and the state has told us that we're not to document. We don't need to document our home tests. So you know, and I can tell you, I might get a case that comes through my database, I make that phone call and then that's when I find out that, you know, three other people in the household are positive because they did the home tests, but they are not, they're not in my database. So I just need to make sure you guys understand those numbers. Um, 
you know, in the, the vaccine rates, we overall, I'm not going to run through the whole thing, but overall, we're still at 76%. That's from the, I run the report from five years to 110 years old. Um, we have kind of stayed steady at 76%, which, which you know, relatively speaking, um, based on the other communities around us, we're, we're pretty much right in line with them. Uh, told you the positivity rate was 12% down from 16%. Uh, Rick Betancourt. I'm sorry? Uh, Rick Betancourt, is he a member here? I have Rick Betancourt on my screen. He's my mortgage broker. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> How did you get on? I I think he's a guest, Dr. McLaughlin. I think he's probably muted. So there's oh. a, there, are, there are a few guests that are on. Oh, I didn't think they were calling on. Okay. Yes, there are, there are a few guesses on. All right. Um, the and just so that you guys know, schools did. We spoke about uh, last time we met. We spoke about the new DESE guidelines, and Danvers Public Schools, as well as Essex Tech, and then I think some of the other um, private schools. They are going to be going along with the DESE guidelines. So what that means is there is no longer going to be test and stay in, in the schools. And with that, it means that they will no longer be doing contact tracing within the schools. So that's, I, I mean, that's huge. It's, it's gonna be huge freeing, freeing the nurses up. The, the school nurses were doing an incredible job with all of that. So that actually, I just got word that those test kits started going home. So as of pretty much today, the contact tracing in school will no longer take place. We're still obviously, you know, I'm still investigating cases. The state has not pulled the plug on that yet. So I am still investigating positive cases, still, you know, identifying household contacts, close contacts, and all of that stuff. Um, the so that's that's good news on that on that front. And then just um, you know, as far as our numbers go, back to the the numbers that 116 for 18 plus year olds, there are you know, it seems to be going back into the facilities again. You guys know that we've got a lot of long-term care, assisted living, and other types of facilities in this town. And it is starting to go through. So just, um, you know, today we had 23, uh, actually it was more like since this afternoon, probably close to uh, 30 cases this afternoon that came through my database, I would say probably 10 to 12 of those were from different facilities in town. So it is starting to go back into the facilities a little bit more than it did previously, you know, last week, the week before. I thought it was kind of peaking at that point, but it, today, today was a busy day in some of the facilities. So, uh, and I think that in the daycares, you know, EEC, constantly changes their guidelines. Um, they changed those last week. So they've, they're they trying to get more in line with DESE guidelines, um, but still, you know, lots of issues going in daycares and, and that type of thing. We have a lot of daycares in, in town as well. So uh, I think that's it for my report. Any questions? I have a question. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Can I go ahead or? All right. Okay, um, did they, I know you've mentioned that the state said that you don't have to track the home tests in the database. Did they tell you why you don't have to do it anymore? Did they have a reason? It's just because it's it's just too difficult and there's too many of them. You yep. know, the daycares are handing out the home test kits. The schools are handing out the home test kits. There's, you know, I mean, the state yep. has even just, handed them out. So it's just, there's just too many yep. to keep track of. And there's no... You know, there, there's just no way to track it. Yep, got it. And then on the long-term care cases that are going up, do you know if they're being hospitalized or do they seem to be staying in the long-term care facility? Do you have any so, sense for that? 
Yeah, they're the, they're staying in the facility there, okay. and and that's one of the big questions that I do ask. Um, and you know, they their vaccination rates. I think I had one facility where there was two people that were not vaccinated. Um, one individual, one of the unvaccinated individual, actually came to the facility with COVID. So from the hospital. So they had been in the hospital and then came into the facility. But yeah, they're they're staying put. Okay. Um, I did have another facility that there was an individual that was in the hospital, but they ended up in the they were going to the hospital for another reason. So it was not COVID yep. reason. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, the only thing I need to uh, like to add too is that we, you know, we do have some COVID uh, test kits that we're working on, um, trying to get those uh, out as well. So working with uh, Aaron on that. Um, and Judith, to go over the numbers, and again, and the uh, just the way the state does track it. Um, Judith, also, they don't include the rapid test, correct? It's just the PCR for they, numbers. They do. In my database, they come in through the way they differentiate is probable versus confirmed. Correct. Danvers has always counted probable cases because we treat them just in the probable cases, just in case you don't know, um, the rest of you probable cases come in, those are the antigen tests, so those are the rapid tests versus the molecular, the PCR. So the probables are those antigen tests, but we treat them exactly the same way. There, there's no difference. Correct. We so do that's why, yeah, that's why we've always state, counted. The state number is, the, number, the state does not include the probables when they do, do the calculations. They cor correct. They only do confirmed, so they only do the PCRs. Yep. Okay, I just wanted to make that clear. Yes. Um, okay. Aside from the numbers and everything else, uh, again, my going to be my second week here, so there are things you know I'd like to, uh, you know, work on and try to get uh, either more testing or if there's a need for, uh, you know, vaccinations. Um, but those something, uh, those are some things I, I tend to look at and Judith and I will uh, will be conversing on that. Uh, can I actually just add um, the North Shore, the state is doing a um, testing site up at North Shore Community College. So not only they're doing vaccinations, but they've just recently, I think last week, they I got notification that they're actually doing testing up there. So and and stop the spread places are still open and up and running as well. Gloucester has one. Salem's got a couple. So those are run by the state. Okay. Thank you. Board have any other questions uh, regarding uh, at least the updates? Well, I want to emphasize ahead. also one of the things just for everyone's information is that the, um, the school department is actually the ones who uh, make the decisions on school policy for masking or whatever, and that any complaints that anyone has about it, the schools how they're doing. Dr. McLaughlin, can you get a little closer where it's it's it, okay, we can sorry. hear you, but it's faint. So yep. I was just going to say that the school department uh, makes the rules about the school in terms of masking and testing. And it's not within our purview to make the rules about. So if there's any concerns about their policies, you should talk to them. And uh, Mr. Chairman, I thank you, Judith, for the update. This is this is great news. I mean, uh, I just kind of look back and see how we went from you know, 467 when we enacted the mandate to 428 the following week, then 339, then 230, and now we are at 116. So I, I think we're trending into the right direction. 
I'm, I'm really pleased. I don't know if Egan has his magic chart uh, to make it kind of visual, but um, positivity rate going from 17 to 16 and 12% going down four points in a week, I think is a great thing. Um, we, yes, Judy? See, can I just interject there? The 116 was for 18 years and older, so the total is 130 for this week. Oh, my apologies. Still good. Still. <laughs> so I do have some magic numbers if you guys would. Want yes. To so, see so it's 130 from 230. So we went down 100. That is good. Um, what, thank you. Sheila can answer this is uh, what this trend has been at the hospitals and seeing less people being admitted. Yes, definitely. Um, you know, I can only from the state numbers, it looks like the hospitalizations are going down and I can only speak for our hospital, but it's definitely the numbers are trending down for sure. It's yes, 100%. I think on the contrary note, the general trend in pediatrics has been upward in terms of infection. More and more papers being written now about long haulers. It's not nearly as big a crisis as it was earlier, but it's trending upward in children. Hoping we'll get another big piece in that puzzle solved when we get six month to five year old vaccinated at the end of this. I could um, share the numbers slides if that's helpful as a visual. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, I hope I'll, I don't freeze. If I freeze, I'll let you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, just keep smiling so that. Yeah, you know, exactly. <laughs> um, so hopefully everyone can see my screen at this point. Um, and again, these numbers are a little different than Judith's numbers um, because these are pulling from the last week's report. The state, Judith publishes, uh, she gives you a number directly from Maven as of today. The state publishes data a couple of days behind that. Um, but again, this is the last 12 weeks case count. Um, so again, this is up through the 21st of January, going back the prior 12 weeks. So you can see that that report is still a little lagging, but you can definitely see that we've been coming down. Um, the next slide um, pulls out a little bit um, and shows the last, I'll say 54 weeks. So a little over a year, this goes back to mid-December of 2020. And again, this is a little dramatic, but I think it's important to understand that the surge that we saw at the end of 21 was nothing like what we had seen at any point up to um, this in the pandemic so far. Um, basically, the December of 20 was our prior high water mark. Um, in which case we we almost got to about 400 cases at any one time um, at that point. And as you can see here, we were more than 300% above that um, in the last couple of weeks. And the way this report spits out, we're still coming down from that. So again, these are the same numbers as I just showed you on the prior slide. The peak looks much sharper here only because of the, the X axis is a lot longer um, and we've consistently been much lower than this. And then switching over to positivity, um, again, similar story, uh, positivity is lagging a little bit even further um, in that we have seen a decline, but that decline is not quite as dramatic as what we have seen on the absolute, you know, on the number of cases. But again, you'll note here that we have not seen this sort of uh, positivity since a year ago at this time. And we thought we were really seeing the worst of it last year when um, we were bouncing between six and 8%. Um, we've absolutely, you know, gone into new territory. So those are um, just a couple bit of the numbers that the board has been looking at lately. And, and I know uh, you've yet, we've never really shared this long time scale graph, but I think it does kind of help put it in perspective as to how dramatic it was um, going into the holidays this past uh, month. 
Thank you very much. That's that's very helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so are we ready to move on to the next? Uh, let's see. Here. Next thing is, oh, I have these all mixed up. Then we have the agenda in front of them. Mine, mine and I only have the second sheet. Uh, Dr. Malone, I'm having a hard time hearing. You have the agenda because I only have the second sheet here. I misplaced the first one. First sheet of the what? agenda. What's next on the agenda? Well, the, the next thing on the agenda was uh, after public nurse report was environmental update. Okay. But okay. I see someone raising their hand. I'm not sure if Dr. McLaughlin has uh, cameras or just audio. No, I have I have my camera on. Okay. Um, Can you see me? You want me to get into the, does board want me to get into the environmental updates at this point? Okay, uh, what I have listed here is, uh, in getting here, I'm just trying to tie up some uh, um, open cases that we had. Uh, first was a condemnation. Um, that uh, on Locust Street, uh, I did go there with fire department and um, electrical from the building. Um, we were able to, I was able to lift a condemnation at least and get the residents back in their home. Uh, cleanup looked really good. Uh, they just have to do some additional things in the basement. Um, we also found upon entering there possible CO2 leak from the flu, so that had to get prepared before I could allow them to enter. So um, everything is going well there, and I just intend to kind of keep a short leash on them just to make sure that uh, property stays maintained. <clears throat> the other uh, thing on the agenda, item on the agenda is uh, pigmenta. And this was kind of a strange uh, um, request. Actually, I got an email from the State Department of uh, Pro Professional Licensure because they issue Pigmenta a license because not only do they do, uh, not only are they permitted as a body art establishment through the, uh, the, the health department here, uh, they also get a state license because uh, they are considered a school for tattoo artists and their curriculum is based upon meeting the criteria of 100 hours of training so that um, their graduates can at least have the educational piece um, completed if or when they um, apply for a practitioner's license in whatever town uh, they choose to go to. So the owner and um, I did give her the invite, so I'm not sure if uh, Julie is on tonight. And uh, if she wants to comment, but our regulations do say that you need to be 21 in order to um, apply and practice body art. So I don't know if the board wants to consider that this is considered a school. Um, because they do have people under 21, students under 21, that would actually be performing it, um, tattoos, and they would bring in either family or friends so they could, I guess, practice on them, just like you see uh, some of these uh, school salons, uh, uh, schools where they, uh, students will bring in family and friends, you know, to get a, a haircut or uh, whatever they were working on that week or that, that day. So I'm not sure, and the regulations do call that the board can issue a variance for that. But again, um, uh, I'm not sure I'm comfortable with someone under 21, especially a student not experienced and trying to gain experience that they're actually performing body art, even though it's a friend or family, it's still, it's you know injecting something into a body. So. I just wanted to hear the board's uh, opinion on that and what they think and if they uh, agree or disagree with my with my um, reasoning. And the state was also wanting to know because um, they gave them a, a, 
a license to operate as a school. However, it's based on the decision of the Board of Health and uh, either to you know restrict and just keep the 21 and above for students. The owner is uh, saying that some of her, her clients are under 21 and obviously during COVID where a lot of businesses lost income, she's trying to recoup as much as she can. So I understand where she's coming from, but again, um, I just don't feel comfortable someone not not fully licensed to be performing at under 21. I personally agree. I think hundreds. Uh, there's a little difference between giving somebody a haircut. There's a difference between giving someone a haircut, uh, which will grow back, versus doing a tattoo, which there's medical issues involved with that. I think you set the 21 reasonably. That should apply to students as well as actual practitioners. Can you hear me, Frank? So is the board uh, saying that we should uh, just keep the body out regulations as is and just strictly lim limited to 21 and older? That's what I said. I don't know what the rest of the board thinks. <laughs> I was muted, so my apologies. Uh, I, I remember this issue coming uh, in front of the board um, months back, and I, I'm not very sure about the details, but are these students like, so are they, they are not working independently, is that correct? They just, they're working under the supervision of whoever the, the teacher is? Correct, the teachers um, at, Pigmenta are licensed through us as body op practitioners. They're over 21 and they have three teachers there. However, it's a students, uh, not all of them are 21. Some of them are under. And she told me that actually some people, you know, fly in uh, for the week long course or whatever, however long it is. Um, and some of it is online. But they do do have to uh, do it, you know, the practical hands-on, so to speak, uh, part of the course as well, so they can get used to working with the um, with the machines and, and and everything else. So, okay, I, I just want to make sure I understand because I'm confused. So, are we saying that you cannot be a student at that facility until you're 21 years old, or are we saying that you can be a student and do the lecture? But as far as it comes to the practice, you can't do it until you're 21. Uh, which that's one what I'm, it? yes, that's what I'm asking. I'm, um, she's, uh, she, she is saying, she's trying to say that because she is a class and not to the, she's not doing um, tattooing to the general public per se, even though part of her business is that. But the schooling part of it, um, she's saying it's not to the public. But when I found more and more out, these students are bringing family and friends in, even though they're not being charged for the service. It's just part of their uh, schooling that they're still doing body art. And they're doing it without a license because they're, they're learning. They're just get, gaining um, credits, uh, classroom cl credits at this point which a lot of towns require a certain amount of hours and it's been, uh, like Boston would require 100 hours worth of schooling. Um, some towns would want to see two years of experience before applying for a permit. So I guess she's trying to separate the schooling part from the um, typical body art for the public. But again, I just don't feel comfortable having students not experienced and not licensed in under 21 um, doing uh, doing that practice. Do most, I'm sorry, I'm just jumping in here, but um, I'm not very familiar with tattoo schools and I honestly didn't have much time to do the research beforehand, so I apologize, but is that, is it typical that schools have 
students that are under 21, like other tattoo schools? I'm just wondering how people actually get the experience to do it. Like, is it something that you just have to wait until you're 21 to be able to even become like an apprentice? I just... It's, it's up to each individual city or town because <laughs> Uh, except for the schooling, which is under the Division of Professional Licensure for this. So there is uh, our state uh, requirements for it. But individual um, body app practitioners, even though we, a lot of city, cities and towns are similar, each city or town adopts their own. So there are some differences. So I have, this is my first that I've come across uh, in, a, you know, in, in uh, a town that has a school in it. The other towns I didn't. I had plenty of practitioners and, and establishments, but not necessarily schools. So, so but our the, regulations I, doesn't address schools either. It just says you need to be licensed to practice. Sorry, I'm jumping in here. Uh, so what was being asked to the board is to change the law as it's written to accommodate kids who are under 18 years old. Is that correct? Under 21, yeah. Yes. Under, under 21, I'm sorry. Yeah, so okay. they were, uh, she's asking that uh, if, if students can perform the actual body art on their clients. And again, they're under 21 and they're not licensed, but they're in a school setting. They're in a school. I mean, uh, I mean as far as I'm concerned, I, I would like to get more information about it. I, I'm not very well versed on this licensing process and do not want to jump the gun and just, uh, as I'm just speaking for myself here, because I mean, if we want to say that someone has to be 21 before they, they do that trade, I don't know if that's right. But on the other hand, uh, I want to understand a little more as to what the school entails. Can they do some lectures? And if they have this many hours of lectures, and if they're over 18 years old, which they're adult at that point, can we allow them to work under a certain strict rule under the, you know, on, on, on the supervision? Okay. Uh, yeah. Because, I mean, if someone is taking that as a trade, is like uh, being a medical assistant or whatever I would take say high blood pressure at the hospital where you know there's there's training involved there's schooling but there's also practicum mm -hmm. and and we want to give those kids the opportunity to practice as long as we feel confident that they have the knowledge mm -hmm. and the training to be able to do a good job so I, I would like to get more information about it okay. before uh I go either way. I I would agree with D on that. I would also like more information. I just don't feel like I'm well versed enough to be able to make a decision. Okay, so I'll I'll try to get some information on other schools what they're doing. Um, I'll ask her to give me a written curriculum and uh, of the, her program. And again, the the state is has issued them their certificate but again contingent upon what the board uh, decides and that's fine because uh, when I spoke to them at the state level they said um, you know it's it's not like a decision has to be made tomorrow so um, they're giving uh, pigment a little bit of leeway right now so I can have that information to the board and I'll uh, we invite uh, Pigmenta, I guess, to the next Board of Health meeting if she wants to also do a presentation. Sounds good. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> Dr. McLaughlin, I think you're, you are you got to get right up on the mic. I think we're having a hard time hearing you. Okay, yeah, and I'm having trouble with my camera. I'm trying to... Um, Get on my iPad because my camera won't stay on. It keeps saying uh, it's not working. Can you hear me now? Better. Okay. You'll have to just listen to me, I guess. I, I can't get the camera to work. Okay. 
Can I try signing out and signing back in again to see if that'll make a difference? Because my camera was working before. Does that sound all right? We we could take a, a two minute recess to allow you to do that if that's helpful. Okay, that would be great. Okay, why don't we take a two minute recess and let you log off and come back in? Getting some technology. Mr. Bancourt, we we see you give give us half a second here while we're in recess. Dr. McLaughlin, are you back with us? Um, Mr. Mc Dr. McLaughlin, if you can unmute your mic and see if we can get an audio, we definitely don't have a video on you. Is that? I, I, it just says my camera isn't working. I don't know what the problem is. Yeah. I think the most important thing is your audio. You, you're just going to have to eat the microphone so we can hear you. Okay. Can you give us a short test? Yeah, can you can you hear me now? You sound like the ad for Verizon. Yeah. I'll sit right up close. I do um not sure if we wanna if we're coming back from recess yet, but I, I um I do think uh Dr. McLaughlin, I'm not sure if you wanted to address public comments or not. Um I know We've had a couple of people with their hands up, but I know I thought we had. Um... All right, well, I'll just read. Why don't I why don't I read the statement? Is that all right? I think that's fine if you yeah. it, it's a little um, we do have a few other items, but I know we, we're going to take that out of order. I think the public would like to uh, hear that statement. OK, I do have one other thing to address, and that is is that. There's a lot of comment about my daughter commenting last time we had the meeting, and they were implying that somehow I set that up and I did not. My daughter called on her own, expressed her own viewpoint as a citizen, she was not coached by me, nor was she encouraged to say any particular. So if you have any complaints about it, it was not the Board of Health. Uh, tonight, the board will discuss the mass requirement adopted at an emergency meeting on December 23rd. The board understands that the discussion and adoption of the mass mandate invokes strong feelings from many members of the community. While the board believes it has not only had the authority to do so, it firmly believes that it was 
given the circumstances we faced at the end of December. Furthermore, we understand that our decision highlighted an unfortunate disagreement that appears challenging to bridge for those who disagree with us. As community members ourselves charged with overseeing the public health of over 27,000 residents, we believe that masks help reduce disease transmission. We understand that those who disagree are equally convinced that intervention is unnecessary and potentially harmful. We don't expect it to change anyone's mind, but nonetheless wish to share our reasoning for adopting the decision. One, this is a temporary measure designed to address the surge in cases likely associated with the Omicron variant. In the data week by week and at appropriate time, we will review it. Two, the board believes and medical, um, medical consensus agrees that masks help to prevent transmission. They do, not, they do stop some particles from going out and some from getting in. Everyone is wearing one, it decreases transmission. Therefore, the requirement to wear masks slows down transmission. Looking for data on this, Healthy Choice, healthychildren.org, the American Academy of Pediatrics, has a complete section on debunking masks for any of you concerned about possible harmful side effects in children from masks. Uh, when the order was discussed, hospitalizations were climbing to dangerous levels and remain high today. The healthcare system in general has been overwhelmed. Anything we can do to slow transmission and prevent even a few hospitalizations is essential. Ensuring that the health care is available and accessible to those who need it for things not related to COVID is critical. We understand the difficulty and impact this has on local businesses, but we believe that slowing the rate of cases is critical to keeping our workforce available. Many residents from other communities coming to Danvers to work, shop, dine, and go to school, increasing the risk of transmission. We are, we are continually assess the situation and will lift the mandate as soon as possible. It's not only the number of cases that we are watching, but the positivity rate and hospitalization utilization rate also factors. Since the rule went into effect, we've received many public comments on the subject, most coming in this week in anticipation of this evening's meeting. The town staff has afforded these to us. They have been made part of the, today's record. Due to the volume, we will not read these aloud nor take public comment tonight. I do want to summarize the overall nature of what we have seen. Written comments overwhelmingly request that we drop the mandate. Some of these comments are quite lengthy and well composed. Others are only brief statements for or against and express opinions. Also been voicemails. These are much more evenly divided, perhaps 60 to 40 in favor of keeping the mask order in place. Regardless of their particular position, all of these comments are appreciated and we thank everyone who has put their time, energy, and thoughts into the matter. Thank you. Okay. Hello. Thank you, Dr. McLaughlin. We got you. Uh, I'm not sure uh, if you're going to continue with the agenda or if other board no, members. I was going to say, let's do the on. next thing on the agenda. Right. Yes. Which is so many things filed here. Okay. So the next thing is uh, cesspools. <laughs> yeah, the interesting thing, what landed on my lap uh, when I got here. Uh, yeah, a few uh, abandoned uh, the systems that had to be filled and uh, properly abandoned. One that involved a uh, toilet and sink, not connected properly or connected to a, a cesspool and not the source. So that got uh, taken out totally. Uh, Holton Street was all set. Um, the one on Garfield Avenue, I'm just having difficulty finding, uh, getting contact with the owner. Um, but we received a inspection form from the Title V uh, inspector, and it either passes or fails. This one failed. And because there's uh, town sewer in the area, uh, they do need to connect. So. It's going to be a process to, to, to get them um, on board and to connect with that because they they don't have the option to repair the system. So just kind of giving you an overview of what's been going on and uh, uh, during my uh, week and a half here. 
So really, that's all I have to say on those. Um, are you done, Frank? Y yes, I am. Okay, I'm just yeah. mm -hmm. Mis Mr. Chairman, if I may, uh, I know we have the agenda. If I make a request to get out of order a little for a minute to just make uh, a, a not a statement, but a comment about the mass mandate, if that's OK. Sure. Uh, because I, I, I believe that uh, it's a big topic of interest to a lot of our residents. Uh, among the material that was sent this afternoon was a petition uh, signed by almost 500 people requesting that we lift the mass mandate. And I believe there were also uh, a lot of comments uh, that came our way uh, requesting that uh, that being be lifted. So if the chairman may allow me to comment on that. The statement was from the chairman, by the way, it wasn't. Uh, so uh, I will say I will start by thanking the public for doing that. This is exactly what you know we want. We want to hear from people, hear what people are thinking hear what they're saying because at the end of the day you know we are at the service of the public um i did look at the i will start by the by the um petition my only ask to the petitioners and the public is that it is important uh that as we as we give out information that it is accurate uh, we all want the same thing. We all want COVID to go away. We all want to leave the mass mandate. Uh, but when I look at the petition that was signed, for example, uh, the people who signed the petition may have been misinformed by the way the petition was written. Uh, it, it stated, among other things, that Denver is at 80% fully vaccinated. We have not been at 80% fully vaccinated since the beginning of the pandemic. So when a petitioner goes and signs it, that is what they believe. And, and that is a disservice to the petitioner as well as it is to everybody else. So if we can all agree on the facts first, then that, that would do a service to all of us. We, I did learn a lot by reading all these notes uh, it was very informative. Uh, I did some digging myself to continue to educate myself in these matters, but it is important that we separate what is factual and what is just pure assumptions. Uh, there was another thing that said that um, about 30% of the, hospital, the hospitalization rate went down 30% since January. Well, that is not, that is not an absolute statement. Uh, there was a quote that said, uh, cloud masks are little more than facial decoration from a very renowned uh, a physician on CNN. Where I did look, I did do my due diligence. I went to the link that the community member had provided, and that is not quite what she said. You know, she, she didn't say it to oppose the mask, but she said it in favor of the mask. And all of the things that she said were true. If you wear an N95, you're more protected than you than if you wear a surgical mask. If you wear a cloth mask, you're less protected than if you wear a, a, a surgical mask. So the statement that she made was true and in favor of masking. She said that Omicron is so viral and spread so fast that if you don't have a good mask, it may not protect you. So she was urging people to actually get good mask and not saying that they shouldn't get a mask. So that again was a little taken out of context. There were three doctors who did an iPad. One of the things that the petitioners also said in the Boston.com stating that we should let our kids, I, I, I can quote it here, it says, uh, they call for an end to the mandate masking in, in schools. Again, these three doctors and three physicians who are very renowned physicians, they were advocating for masking in their statement. They were just saying that if everybody was able to have a high quality 
N95 mask, then we won't have to mandate it to everyone. It could be optional because if I have my N95, if the other person is on mask, I am still protected. So I wish we will be advocating for us to try to get all N95 masks, in which case, if I have my N95 mask, then if someone else doesn't have the mask, they don't have, I don't have to worry about it because I'm still protected. So I, I believe that we all want the same thing. Uh, and, and, and we just want to have the facts and put it into the context. This is not, this is not a, it's not, you know, it's, it's a gray area. And someone also said hospitalization was going down. Well, as public health professionals or members of the Board of Health, I see my duty as long as I hold this role as protecting, promoting, and pre preventing, not waiting for people to get to the hospital before we do something about it. That's, that will not be the, the, the true essence of public health. So I, I just, and again, it's up to the chairman if he wants to take public comments or not, but I felt compelled to just let everyone know that the messages that came our way, I read them, I did my due diligence and look into all the references that were provided, and I really appreciate them. But at the end of the day, I still came to the conclusion that the decision that we made uh, was the right one, and hopefully, hopefully, uh, that is that is reversed soon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Dee. I think that's very eloquent. I think it's right on the money. Um, none of us took this lightly. Um, I don't like wearing a mask any more than anyone else does, but I'm concerned with public health. We are supposed to be the public health leaders, not the followers. So uh, the lay public who doesn't have public health training, um, I would hope if they really were listening to us that they would hear that what we're saying. Masks do work. They do decrease transmission. Maybe they're not 100%. They do decrease it, and they basically cut the spread. It is a simple, inexpensive, unobtrusive, safe way of cutting down the spread. Even if it cuts down by 10%, that's 100,000 people more alive today. So that's it. I say. And, and if I may, Mr. Chairman, I feel like I, maybe I'm, I spoke too long. But I, and I would also like to let the public, they are legitimate concerns to have in wearing the mask. I mean, some people have rashes. If you have asthma and you're exercising, uh, it, could be, it, it, it could be difficult. So there are some legitimate concerns. However, when we look at the overwhelming evidence, it is still the right thing to do at this time. Yeah, and if I can just jump in, I would agree with what you have said, Dee, and same with Dr. McLaughlin. Um, I think what we're trying to do is slow down the cases. If we can prevent even a few cases, then then that's a win in my mind. And and yes, not let people get to the hospital. Those cases need to go down. We need to protect our hospital staff. We need to protect the healthcare system, which in turn protects the public. And I want to thank the public too. I, I agree with Dia. Like I read every single one of those comments. I have not had a chance to go into all of the research and the links that were provided, but I do intend to do that. And I welcome the feedback from the comp from the public. And I I've read every single one of them and I've learned through it. And I welcome you to keep doing it to hold us accountable and make sure that we are doing our due diligence on this, which we all have, and I think there's always more to learn. So thank you all for all of the comments that you sent. All right, so next on the agenda is new establishments. Is that correct? So, sorry about that. Uh, food establishments, uh, yes, uh, uh, the big one is market basket renovations. Um, they seem to be doing well. They expanded out into the ad adjacent uh, spaces. And they are 
um, opening uh, a few departments at a time. So they're going to be phasing in and each time uh, that they do open, I will be going in there just making sure that everything's OK. Um, about a week or so or this week, they are slated to open the produce, the new produce and bakery departments, and then they're going to be moving on to the uh, prepared foods and uh, meat departments uh, right after that. So um, yeah, that was kind of put on the back, not on the back burner, but uh, they were waiting for um, health department to get back and with the absence here. So that's the first thing I took on. Um, the next one was at Fate Brewing. Um, they just wanted to bring in some food so they can have uh, feed the public at least uh, and offer them food during uh, in their um, uh, tap room. So I schedule a time that I'm going to be going down there and just uh, reviewing their plan. They're just keeping it simple, a simple menu, literally pizzas and pretzels, nothing. Uh, um, nothing that they're going to be preparing a lot of uh, uh, T TCS foods. And uh, just a couple of other things coming down the pike with um, at the sports facility. There's going to be a large art fest going on and they'll be providing food there as well. Um, I have yet to meet with the person, but the person running it is saying that oh. it's going to be one of the largest in yeah. the uh, in the area um, and that's going to be in a couple of months I believe they said so I'll be meeting with them so I just wanted to keep the board abreast just with any renovations and things going on just in case you uh <clears throat> he's <clears throat> trying to see if he can allow public comment what? sorry working on it and that's all I have to say for new establishments. Anything else? Okay, I'm trying to figure it out. Yep. He did, but D's still trying to win him over. All right, hold on. Yeah. I gotta hang up. Yep. Bye. Right. What's going on? What are we what are we doing? Anything here? What? Is everyone muted? We we can hear you, but barely, Dr. McLaughlin. Um, okay, I'm trying. Yeah, but it didn't I didn't hear anyone else. That's what I was okay. Dee, did you want to speak? I was I was muted. <laughs> okay, so can everyone hear me? Yes. I've been trying and I don't yes. know what's going on. I'm just getting feedback and feedback. Technology. Sorry, I'm not technology savvy. So can some can everyone hear me? I can. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I also had a question, and and I know, I mean, with the overwhelming uh, mails and messages that we did receive over this mass mandate issue, I I don't know if we should, if, if I can indulge you to maybe uh, allow. The residents to speak uh, if they choose to do so, as long as they stay respectful and well, and, and right within now, a certain decorum. There's 30 some odd on here, and they're all going to want to have their three minutes, and we're going to be here till midnight. This is a mm. public meeting, not a public hearing. I mean, if we start allowing the comments, we're not going. We're never going to be. We, their comments are, are noted and we take them into account, but they still don't change the facts. So and I'm getting all these messages, people holding up things saying we will not comply. You know, take messages and we will ed educate you. So it's very hostile and I really don't feel up to taking hostile messages. If any of the rest of you want to to sit around and take them, that's fine. I don't. Yeah, that's fine. It was just uh, 
it was just a question to see if that was possible. Maybe so in that case, maybe we will try to schedule a public hearing and for people who want to um, speak of this matter. I'm not sure at a later date then. To me, that makes sense, Dee. I mean, I think giving the public an opportunity to speak is an okay thing to do. If we don't want to do it tonight, I think doing it on another night is okay. Thank you. Sorry, Frank, for interrupting you. I'm not sure if you were done. I was having technical difficulties. Yeah. The last thing on the uh, agenda, just animal care update. Um, we use uh, uh, Kevin Nichols and Bev, so it's uh, reappointment time. So they'll be putting in their papers for the animal control officer position and the inspector of animals. They're two separate titles. Um, but they'll be done by the same people. And in the week and a half I've been here, um, they seem to be very good, very knowledgeable, and uh, taking care of uh, complaints and inspections as needed. So um, that's it about the uh, and the department. Um, and speaking with uh, Aaron and uh, the town manager, that we do still have that full-time inspector position that needs to be filled. So I'm hoping to move on that and start getting some resumes in and interviewed for that position too, just so we can get back to a, a routine um, inspection schedule. But that's about it about the department. Does the board want to take some public comment? I mean, I'm willing to do it if you are, but we have to limit it. I'm not going to, I don't want to be here all night. How does the rest of the board feel about it? I don't think I have the right to impose that one way or the other. I mean, uh, I'm willing to to take it um, as long as, you know, we have a level of decorum. Yep. I agree. So we could limit it to three minutes a person. Mm -hmm. Frank That's correct. Or, or uh, Aaron sort of be the timekeeper for that. Well, we'll be happy to play timekeeper. Okay. Why don't we limit the total time to an hour? That's 20 people that can speak. I don't think. Any other feelings? I mean, I, I, as far as I'm concerned, I'm, I'm willing to stay as long as people are willing to speak as long as they keep their three minutes. Uh, give everybody the chance to, 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 to speak. Uh, as far as I'm concerned. Okay. I'm okay with it too. I'm not even sure people had raised their hands earlier, but do we just to keep it orderly? Do you want to just go down the list that you know? I see Denise Hannes first, and we want to just go down the list that way. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll have to unmute the. We'll have to un enable the microphone, and then the individual will have to unmute themselves. So, give me three seconds um, to to enable the microphone. <laughs> Bear with me here. Sorry, it's acting up. Uh, Ms. Hannes, if I'm saying your name correctly, I apologize if I'm not. I think if you just unmute yourself now. And you have the floor for three minutes. Hi, so this is um, <clears throat> this is actually uh, Matthew Hannes, uh, Denise's oh. husband. Sorry so about that. No, no worries, no worries. So, you know, I, I'm not really here to advocate for or against masking. I, I'm here to advocate for masking being optional. 
if someone wants to wear a mask, that's entirely up to them, and I would fully support that decision. If someone does not, I, I support that decision as well. Full disclosure, I support not wearing masks, right? But I'm not going to prevent anybody from doing it. But to make it mandatory and not leave it up to individual discretion, I think is a mistake. And unless you are able to objectively show data that the mask mandate in Danvers is having an impact, it's great to say, you know, we, we know masks work. You know, it's you, you can quote studies on either side for and against, right? We, we could go back and forth all night on that. But do you have any data that shows that from the time that you implemented the mask mandate in Danvers, that it's actually had an impact on cases? Yes, look at the look at the graph. Right. Is there a control group against which you've compared it? What, what's a control? People that didn't get sick? <laughs> no, a, a town that doesn't have a mask mandate, right? So, you know, well, full disclosure again. Unfortunately, unfortunately, though, we're all interconnected, and we may not have a mask mandate in Middleton, but many people in Middleton come here. They benefit from our prevention. Yeah, well, isolate the community. Yeah, no, that, I mean, that's, that's fine, right? But if you take a place like Burlington, right, which is a town similar size to Danvers, similar makeup, you can look at their cases over the same amount of time, and the difference between similar communities of similar composition in that same time, mass versus unmasked, is less than a percent in total case growth over that period of time, right? To me, if you were going to mandate a mask, you would have to show a 50% decrease, right? Something impactful, not less than 1%, right? And, you know, I, I only have a, a few seconds left. So, you know, speaking specifically to Dr. McLaughlin, I watched your testimony at a school committee com meeting, meeting in uh, in September. I think it was third week in September. And in that meeting, part of your comments, you stated that um, when we were talking about hospitalizations of vaccinated people versus unvaccinated people, you said 97% of the hospitalizations were vaccinated, or I mean unvaccinated, and 3% were, were, uh, were vaccinated. You could go to mass.gov for that day, and look at the breakdown of vaccinated versus unvaccinated hospitalizations, and it was 70% to 30%, right? So clearly vaccines are helping, but for you to make that statement- Oh, that was nationwide. You're doing the one for Massachusetts. <laughs> There's no way that's nationwide. We're, Though, we're that, getting, that's right, we're getting that's right up right. against the three minutes. That's right. We're not gonna get started on arguments. Yeah, okay. well, just one last thing. If, if we can't trust you to interpret that data that's readily avail available, how can we trust you to correctly interpret data you know, as to whether or not we keep a mask mandate? Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Um, one second here. The next up is um, Ms. Jen Cummings. I just need to... Uh, Enable the microphone, and then you'll have to unmute yourself. And the floor is yours for three minutes. Miss Cummings, it's saying you're unmuted, but we're not getting audio on you. No, we're not having success. Um, keep your hand up, we'll come back to you. Um, sometimes leaving the meeting and coming back in for some odd reason helps with that. Um, if you wanna try that, we will get to you eventually. I'm gonna move down to um, Gerilyn. I don't have a last name or maybe that's a first name. Your mic has been enabled if you can unmute yourself and you have the floor. Gerilyn, can you unmute yourself? Okay. Well, we'll keep trying, and, and so we'll keep those hands up so that we can double back on you. Molly Henry, if you can unmute and give us an audio. Yes. Yep. Okay. Floor is yours. Three minutes. 
All right. Hi. Um, I also wanted to thank uh, those of you who offered to allow us to speak tonight. I think a lot of us really wanted to have this conversation, and I appreciate you know S Sheila and Dr. D who who allowed us to happen. So in the beginning of the meeting, we the question came up how that where I guess it was Beverly was the only town around us that doesn't have a mandate. It's actually only 23% of all Massachusetts towns and cities that do not have a mask mandate. So that's a majority of our towns and cities don't have a mandate. And I also actually go shopping in Middleton because I don't want to wear a mask in Danvers. So going back to, I was a little disappointed. I was left off the meeting in regards to the violation. Um, but I did pick up some uh, several concerns from it. The notion that people who do not wear masks prefer to burden the hospital systems is ridiculous. The fact that people say this out loud and believe it, it shows their commitment to the fear narrative and unable to intelligently disseminate the data. Where is COVID spread? Is it at the local market basket or is it at small indoor gathering gatherings such as our most recent holidays? As a reminder, you, you and everyone else here can easily look up the numbers for the hospitals via the state or John Hopkins and less than 50% of hospitalizations are for COVID. In addition, many of those are being admitted are unrelated to COVID, but are incidental positives. A side note, we already had a nursing shortage in Massachusetts prior to COVID and all of our hospital systems run close to capacity during the winter and flu season. Hospitals run at 80% year round because of a cost revenue stream of their parent companies. Again, all easy to attain information if you're looking to understand the full picture. When are you planning to drop this mandate? The town attorney confirmed in writing to me that you were only placing the mandate to reduce the spread over the holiday. The holidays are over. Other towns and schools have removed the mandate already or never mandated masks after the state of emergency ended. It's a false sense of security after numerous experts have come out and said we should have never worn masks for respiratory viruses in the first place. Leanna Wen, a Washington Post and CNN analyst, calls it little more than facial decorations. However, let's review the numbers so we gain an idea of if this mask mandate actually worked. So I use, what's that? You're up against your three minutes. Okay. So I'll send it, but I compared us to Burlington. And they are the same size, a hub of shopping district, and they had less cases than us. But the most important thing is that what comes up often is mental health. The Secretary of Education and the Secretary of Health and Human Services released a statement on January 28th to schools. You can read the full version on your own, but they referred to the impact of socialization, anxiety, stress, and depression as profound in the twin demic to COVID. These are experts asking for the removal of strict COVID protocols because of their contribution to the mental health crisis. Laughing or dismissing the mental health impacts of COVID restrictions by this board is alarming and unacceptable. You are contributing to the dissolution of our town and harming the residents. All things you are sworn not to do. Please yeah, drop the mandate. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I think. Um, Gerilyn, you were um, before. I just want to see if we can try you again. If if you still have your um, sorry, you still have your hand up. Can you unmute and try audio again? I'm not sure if Gerilyn's paying attention, so we'll we'll come back. Mr. Trainers, next up. If you want to unmute your mic. I am floor, unmuted. Floor is yours. All right. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Nope. Oh, floor is yours. OK, I'm not going to repeat what a lot of people have already said, um, really just comparing us to other towns. The vast majority of towns in the state don't have a mandate. The state doesn't have a mandate. All we follow the similar trends to all these towns that don't have mandates. OK, I know our cases have dropped. All their cases have dropped. The other thing is. As you know, you're on the Board of Health, and exposure is being within six feet of someone for over 15 minutes. I 
I don't think that happens a lot in Target, you know, and that's what it's doing. The other issue I want to bring up is fitness centers. During the state's reopening plan, you did not have to wear a mask at a fitness center if you were 14 feet away and actively working. Okay, that's some health is actually one of the things that helps you out with this. It's just not really fair. I invite any of you to come to a fitness class with me and work out with a mask. It, it really, it's not fun, okay? And that should be my right to, to stay in shape. Um, I just, I don't understand why when we had no vaccines, we could work out without a mask, but now we have vaccines and we have to wear one. It, it just really doesn't make any sense. Um, and basically the other thing is this was a temporary mask mandate, okay? I didn't really argue it in the beginning. Cases are down 40% from the peak, okay? And if you want to do this, I, I, I'm sure next year the same thing's going to happen because it tends to happen around the holidays. And if you want people to buy into this, make it temporary, okay? Cases are dropping. If you, if you drop the mandate now, I don't think our cases are going to start going up. I, I really don't. I mean, everywhere in the state is going down now. And like I said, maybe we do this for three weeks, but we just don't drag it on for months. Um, that's the only thing I ask you to consider, and that's just coming from the public. Um, that's it. Thank you, for, thank you for letting me talk, by the way. I appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Trainer, um, And thanks for the website um, help <laughs> earlier. Oh, you're week. welcome. <laughs> um, I appreciate it. I actually appreciate when you write that and when people respond. So I, I, I do. It, it is, you guys are in a tough position. I get that. But I, I just hope you consider all the facts that are going on and, and make it a temporary mandate. Thank you. That's our intention is for it to be temporary. We, we didn't set a specific date because then it's hard to move it up if you needed to. And also we didn't know what was going to happen. So we're, we're, we're evaluating the data, you know, weekly. We get it from Judith every week. Right. I mean, it is down 40% from the peak right right now. I, I will say that. And like I said, in towns without a mandate, it, it followed a similar pattern. And do you, I'll ask you a question. Do you think if we remove this on Friday, the cases would, would start to, we'd start, instead of going down, we'd start going up? I don't know. Uh, what I do know, though, for instance, is that even down 40%, we're way still above any point we were previously in the pandemic. We right. have a school vacation coming up, which I don't know what that's going to do. But we truly are evaluating. This isn't something we want to keep on any longer than anyone else does. Okay. Fair. Remember also when you when you say something about 23% of the towns in Massachusetts have a mandate, uh, the population isn't spread evenly among all towns. I mean, there's places out in Western Mass, which count as a town, only have 12 people. So it's a little bit misleading because if you look at this area, the places that do have them are very large population centers. So I wonder what percent of the population is under mandate. I just think that'd be curious. Um, yeah, I'm sure you could figure that out. I mean, the two neighboring towns next to us don't don't have a mandate. And like I said, I just I, I see why it went into place, but I, I think things are dropping at this point. And again, the the risk of so a lot of this. I mean, the state doesn't do contact traces anymore, but you do remember that. Most of the spread was in-home spread, which this really doesn't address. And it's like all these places you go, you don't even meet the criteria of an exposure. I, I just, I, I don't know. I don't, I mean, you're a doctor, do, you know, kids, oh, you know, we were in Target or we were in Stop and Shop. I, I think I think we probably picked it up there. I mean, maybe workers that are around each other for a while, but the general public, uh, I'm not really sure that that's how it's spreading. I mean, all the data doesn't suggest that. And, and the holidays are tough, and they're, they're going to be tough next year, too. But just, I don't think it's fair to drag this on, especially when everything's dropping. Like, you know, it's, this is something we're going to live with for, for a while. You're right. Okay. And like I said, I've said, I've said what I need to say, but I, I just really hope you consider these facts when you make these decisions, because it, it actually does affect a lot of people, especially, like I said, especially like with the gym, like. I mean, come on. Let me let me work. Mr. Trainer, I think we've we've gone over our, our three minutes. I okay. know back and forth, so I wanted to afford that. Um, but we have a few more hands that are coming up. All Hang right. on line if we want to, if we come back around. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I saw Thank you. Ms. Um, Geraldine Mazers 
went the extra mile and logged into a second device to, in hopes of maybe this one working. So I'm, I've uh, enabled your microphone, Ms. Majors, if you can unmute yourself from the second device. Can and you hear me? Got it. Yes. Yep. Okay. Floor is yours. And it's Masters, not Mazers. <laughs> my apologies. I have been a resident of the town of Danvers and paid my taxes for the last 32 years. I'm a little upset with all this mask mandate. It was get vaccinated. I was one of the first ones in line. I got both vaccines. I refused to do the booster. I have a child who is in high school. You want us to wear N95 masks? How about the town helping us pay for it? My husband and I are both disabled, extremely limited income, but my taxes are up to date. And I think it's really bothersome when you take the time in your life to go on a town hall meeting to the Board of Health and you want to dicker back and forth about whether you're going to take comments from citizens who pay the taxes. I'm sorry, but that is wrong. If a citizen takes the time to get on this, to talk to you, there's a problem if you don't want to listen or spend an extra hour, excuse me, Dr. Whoever here, that was rude to me. And I don't appreciate it. 32 years I've lived in this town. 32 years I've paid my taxes. 32 years I've raised four children. I have eight children in my, eight people in my household. You want me to buy N95 masks when we're all 100% vaccinated? I don't think you have the right to tell me as a government that I have to wear a mask. In fact, I went to Market Basket today, and I refused to wear the mask. So I don't know what you're going to do about the mask mandate. I know it's crippling my child, my 18-year-old, who is a senior in high school, who relies on facial expressions to know what is going on in life. If somebody accepts what he says or doesn't accept what he says. And he's been beside himself going to school this year for fear of not understanding if someone accepts what he says. And I don't think it's right. I really don't. And as far as the tattoo people trying to get a license, I think you should allow it. These are people 18 to 21 years old who are paying for a course, who are paying and preparing for what they plan on doing for their future. If they're 18, chances are they have graduated from high school and they are part of the community and working. And I think you should acknowledge their efforts. And if they're being supported by another doctor, you should allow it. It's a school. And that's all I have to say. Perfect timing. Perfect time. Um, let's try. Um, the next one up is Danielle. Jen Cummings, I think we tried before and she does not seem to have uh, her microphone working. So we're going to go to Danielle. I apologize. I don't see a last name. If you can unmute. Hello. Gotcha. gotcha. Yes, we can hear you. Floor is yours. Hi, um, I'm a resident here and I just want to say that I'm also against the mask mandate. Like Mike Trainer was saying, if you want to imply it for three weeks, then imply it for three weeks, people are going to be more serious about wearing them and then knowing that they are eventually going to be taken off. But I'm just here to say that I am against the mask mandate and they should be taken off. I also think that people should probably be focusing more on health. Like Mike said, you know, going to the gym, exercising, eating well, you know, not being morbid, morbidly obese, smoking cigarettes, and, you know, wanting everybody else to be wearing masks because they're in fear that they're going to get sick because they're so unhealthy. So, I mean, I think we should be focusing on other avenues of being healthy and not wearing a mask. And that's all I have to say. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next up, I'm just going down the line, um, is Erica. I don't have a last name. I'm going to allow the microphone and then you'll have to unmute yourself. Hi, um, 
Got Hi, it. Aaron. It's Aaron. Hi. Marcy, how are you? Um, I won't beat a dead horse. I agree with everything that's been said. I just wanted to know what is the criteria to end it? Like, what do you, what are we waiting for? I mean, Beverly just listed, lifted their mask mandate. So what, what happened to Beverly that's different than, than Danvers? Like, what is your benchmark here? It's, I think that's the frustration as well. Is it seems, I, I know you say you doesn't, you don't want it to be forever. It very much feels eternal at this point. Like, what? How do we get to the end of this? I mean, uh, anyway, that, that's all I, I have to say. Thanks. I think let's try Ms. Cummings one more time. Your microphone is enabled, and in theory, all you have to do is unmute yourself. Yeah, there you go. Still don't seem to have audio on you. There was a call in number, and I know I see a few other folks have had success calling in. Um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna move on to the next one. Um, this is a Katie Lamfier. I'm gonna allow your microphone, and then you unmute yourself. Hi. Floor is uh, yours. I don't have too much to say. I I'm one of the people that signed that petition that you mentioned earlier and yes maybe not everything was on it was factual um that you looked up but i would have signed anything and that went out i think to this morning and it got 500 people to sign i don't think anyone really was reading it we just want the mask done i would have signed anything i don't want to shop around here i'll go to burlington mall i'll go anywhere else i don't want to be wearing the mask i don't feel like I should should have to in this community. I don't think that it's it's I don't think it's doing as much as everyone seems to think that it is. I wear an N95 for my job. Um, I just want to get back to some sort of normalcy. I want my kids to. I think it is ridiculous. It, I have four children. Um, one has never been to elementary school without wearing a mask. And I know we're not talking about the kids right now in the school, but I think everyone is extremely tired, extremely tired. And I don't want to have to drive to another community to shop. I don't want to have to look somewhere else. But if Beverly dropped theirs, it looks like I'm going to Henry's this week. I, I just don't. I think everyone is beyond frustrated. And I understand you. you read the fine print in, or even whatever was written on that petition, but 500 people signed it this morning <laughs> within an hour. People just want this over very, very much. Um, and, and to drag it out, it seems, just seems a little crazy. I don't know what we're waiting for. It's never gonna be perfect. It's never going away. And, you know, I'm just tired. I'm very, very tired. That's all. Thank you very much. All right, Ms. Cummings is back in. I think if you can try unmuting, maybe we'll have success. Can you hear me? Gotcha. Yes. Finally. Thank Great. you. Great. Sorry for Thank that. you. It's okay. Um, thank you so much for giving me a few minutes to speak. I appreciate your time. Um, first of all, I just wanted to point out that the um, percentage of vaccine rate that you mentioned was incorrect on the um, petition is actually posted on your Board of Health website in your COVID data statistics uh, for the five plus age group. It shows an 80% vaccination rate. So I just wanted to point that out for clarification. Um, additionally, as other have mentioned Beverly um, used the same metrics that were also mentioned in that petition. So I just wanted to point that out. That can be found in the patch article um, from, I believe it was uh, yesterday. And then lastly, um, I've heard talk about N95 masks. I'm a nurse. I perform the N95 testing on my nurses. And I just have to say that throwing N95 masks out there as an option for the general population is um, malicious. It really gives a false sense of security. It is not the answer. 
people have to know how to appropriately wear them. They need a medical clearance to wear them. At least the nurses do. So if it's good enough for medical professionals, that's how we should be treating our public. So you need medical clearance. You need fit testing, which isn't being told to the public. Fit testing is a process. It's a test. So we can't just recommend N95 masks to the general population as a fix-all. Facial hair. Anyone with facial hair? How many people do you see with facial hair walking around with masks on? The mask is completely ineffective if you have facial hair sticking out of that mask. So I am just educating people that we can't just be throwing around these ideas without all of the information. So we're telling the public, we're giving them N95 masks. They are basically useless unless they are fit tested. Everyone's facial features are different. Their structures are different. You have to be tested yearly. So please stop telling the public it's okay just to wear these random masks when you're not giving them all the information that goes along with it. Um, <clears throat> I also just wanted to say that even pre COVID, um, getting up against your three minutes. Thank you. I'll finish up. Um, even pre COVID the science hasn't changed when it comes to masking and viral transmission. Um, the makeup of masks have not changed, especially medical masks, uh, surgical masks. So I just wanted to just quote one thing and then I will uh, be done. Masks are really for infected people to prevent them from spreading infection to people who are not infected rather than protecting uninfected people from acquiring infection. The typical mask you buy in the drugstore is not really effective in keeping out virus, which is small enough to pass through the material. It might, however, provide some slight benefit in keeping out gross droplets if someone coughs or sneezes on you. I do not recommend that you wear a mask, particularly since you are going to a very low risk location. Your instincts are correct. Money is best spent on medical countermeasures such as diagnostics and vaccines. And that quote is from Dr. Anthony Fauci on February 5th in an email to one of his friends. Science doesn't change when it comes to masks. February 5th. So please. That's, that's just, right up there. Yes. But please just consider everything that everyone is saying. People are looking at information. People are educating themselves. Please don't dispute the fact that people are trying to educate themselves. They may not have medical degrees. They may not be doctors. They may not be highly educated themselves, but we need to listen to the public. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next up going down the list is Jim Morose. Uh, if you can unmute your microphone. You have the floor. Okay. Uh, can you hear me? Yep. Yes. Okay. Hi, Jim Morales. Yeah, I am a town meeting member of Precinct Three, and, and, and I do appreciate you guys taking the uh, the uh, public input. And I agree pretty much with everyone, everything everyone said to this point. Some of that stuff I had written down. But one thing that really you know always bothered me when I would listen to all these debates is. is Comparisons, and one guy brought up a great comparison, Davis to Burlington, masked, unmasked, and it's there's viva no difference. Again, as he pointed out, 75% of this state doesn't have a mask mandate, only 24%. So, you know, it's one every for one every one in town. And uh, and the metric that always what I wondered about was the mortality rate. So I actually went to the CDC's website, went to the mortality rate, lo and behold, they they had the mortality rate for the uh, uh, the regular flu virus that we get all the time, and the, the mortality rate was I think it was 1.6 or 1.8, and uh, and but I couldn't find the mortality rate for COVID-19 on the CDC site. They had a rough COVID. They just said there's so many deaths and a hundred thousand, but they didn't have the the actual rate. So I had to go to John Hopkins and their rate was 1.2. So I'm saying, gee, <laughs> you know, the mortality rate is higher for the regular flu than it is for COVID-19. You know, so those are the things that, why are we jumping through all these hoops when the mortality rate is so low? It's, 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 it is the regular flu at this point. 
and and the and the the track of the floor. I'm not a doctor, but I play one on uh, when I'm a parent and a grandparent. <laughs> 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 and and so when you look at these things, I think about. Uh, oh, I lost my train of thought. I went into grandparent mode now. <laughs> but uh, uh, all right. At any rate, I agree, and I think that we really need to just you know. You've got a lot of information. Oh, and one more thing is that someone brought it up. We need to have, you know, I mean, I know you guys are working the figures. You said you were going to weekly go over the, uh, you know, to evaluate. You know, maybe you need to put that on the website so people can see it. We evaluated it. This is this is where we're going. This is where we are. And this is what we, you know, we, we need to have some trajectory here. We need to have feedback. Okay, that's all I'm saying. So I think uh, that should do me for now. And I, yeah. Uh, I, I I can see the rest of my time. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Morose. Um, Ms. Keneally, you're up next. Your microphone is enabled. Can you hear me? Gotcha. Okay, floor thank your, you. Floor is yours. Um, so first of all, I'm glad you finally allowed public comments. I've been on the call and you know it's now my kid's bedtime and I'm taking time. Someone else made the comment that these are these are your citizens. You work for us. I know you are not elected, but you were appointed. And we are here because we care. We care about our community. We care about our kids. We care about our neighbor's kids. And now I'm sitting here waiting, trying to get my kids to bed, but this is so important to me. And I know it's important to every single person on this call. And it is your job to listen to us, whether you like it or not. The mask mandate should end. Someone else brought up Burlington. I know it's one data point, but the trend is exactly the same. This will not go away. Someone earlier said, I know we all want COVID to go away. We all need a reality check that it is not going away. We can't beat it. It is a virus we are going to have to learn to live with. So what's the end game? Someone else asked. The end game is not going to be masks every time cases spike. Did anyone realize that cases spiked when everyone started testing so that they could be with their families for Christmas because they care about their loved ones and they wanted to protect them? We all want to protect each other. Stop the mandates. Let us live our lives and let us live peacefully and normally. Our kids are suffering. We are suffering. I'm done with this. Thank you. Um, board members, I think that's everyone that had their hand up. And I'm not sure, I think you got through everything on your agenda. Oh, of course, uh, I said I that. I just had one I more question. I'm sorry. I see this one just more one hand more. up. And again. Yep. Yep, Ms. Yeah, I'm sorry. I just had one question to follow up on. So we had requested some additional information from the board as far as studies, et cetera. Uh, we did request that in five business days, which is more than the 48 hours that a lot of places um, ask for information back. So we would appreciate if um, the board would put together that information for the public and share it with them. Thank you very much. Ms. Cummings, I'm not sure tonight you've asked for information. I just need, we need clarification on that. In the petition, there ah. was a request for information. Okay, we, we'll, we'll follow up with you. Um, we'll follow up with you on that. Thank you. The public would appreciate transparency. Thank you. I don't know. Okay, can you hear me? I was that. Okay, yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. I see another hand, Aaron. Yes. I thought I saw a. Okay. Shannon. Yep. Uh, Shannon, your mic has been enabled. You 
you just have to unmute yourself. I apologize, Shane, I don't see the last name, but you're, you are, if you can unmute yourself, you get the floor. Doesn't look like she's able to unmute herself. Unfortunately, we can't unmute people for themselves. Oh, there you go. You're unmuted, Shannon. Can we hear you? Unfortunately, you're unmuted, but we're not hearing you. We got a brief snippet of the audio and then it cut out. At the board's discretion, we can try Mr. Morose again, um, coming back around for second comment. See if Shannon's audio comes back. Uh, Shannon, it may be best if you exit and come back in. That's been successful for others. Um, and Mr. Morose will talk and maybe you'll beat him back to the punch. <laughs> um, Mr. Morose, why don't you jump in? Unmute yourself. Okay, can, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, I, yeah, I was going to say that maybe you should just have a log in and log out, but I did remember what I was going to say. <laughs> uh, you know, the reason that the, the statistics were level between the 24% that are masked, the towns, and the 76% of the towns that aren't masked is because, you know, we are a free people and we're, we're, we're responsible and self-reliant and self-sufficient. So the people that are sick, they know they should wear a mask and they wear a mask when they go out. And, and or they self-quarantine and they're not out, okay? So that's why the statistics are gonna be the same because you're masking all these healthy people for no reason when it, the you know, again, the, the sick people know we're sick. And you know, and I'm, I'm on the edge. I'm, you know, I'm one of those, what, the, you know, pre-existing conditions that would take me out if they got it. So. We all know the risk, okay? So, but that's all I wanted to say. I'm done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Trainer has his hand up again, um, and I don't see the Shannon having come back in yet. So I'm not sure if the board wants to hear from Mr. Trainer again. Unmute yourself. Mr. Trainer, I'm, your microphone's enabled, but you just need to unmute yourself. It's not working. We had audio on you before. I'm, hmm. It's usually a little, the, sorry. I don't think Shannon M has come back into the meeting. At least I'm not seeing her in the list at the moment. Um, I'm going to lower Mr. Morose's hand. Mr. Trainer's not working. I'm not sure the what the board wishes to do at this point. If you want to move on or give folks a few more minutes. I would say as as at the uh, as we in some ways move towards the end, I think as many of you have there is ways to contact us staff passes and uh, Shannon's coming back in now. Um, 
staff forwards all the comments we received. There's a form on the Board of Health website. You can obviously, several of you know how to email staff directly. We do pass all of those along. Those are saved to the record. Um, so again, even though we may not respond, we do try to respond to everything, but some days like this week, the volume gets rather uh, difficult to respond to all of the emails coming in, but we do try to respond. But no, if we don't, we do receive them and they are uh, retained um, in the files uh, and the board does see them. I do see, um, uh, whoop, they just left the meeting. I was gonna call on the next person, but with that, I'm not sure what the board wants to do. I think I saw Shannon, but she, this time around, she doesn't have her hand raised and she seems to have left. It actually looks like we may have lost D as well. And I'm not sure if Dr. McLaughlin is still. I'm still, I'm still here. I just oh, sorry. the camera. Yeah. D, D's I come back. Camera. What is D? You've got to enable D's microphone one second. D, you're back. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm not sure what happened there. It seems like uh, everything just disappeared. <laughs> Technology. If the okay. board wishes, I do see Molly Henry raised her hand. She had spoken once. I do see Shannon's back in the meeting, so I, I would like to give her a chance. Yes. I'm going to allow her microphone. Shannon, if you can unmute, hopefully we get audio on you this time. Hi, can you hear me? Gotcha. Yes. Great. Hi, my Thank name you. is Shannon. I live in Danvers. We moved here last year. Wonderful town. Um, I just wanted to say briefly, of course, number one, I think that, you know, it's time to move forward. People who want to protect themselves with masks should do that. People that don't want to shouldn't have to. And number two, as far as children go or as far as specific populations, my daughter has a hearing loss. and having her hearing loss when she sees someone speaking to her with a mask on it you know she can't understand fully what they're saying um so i was this my comment was coming when you guys were talking about certain populations so maybe i'm late to the game with my com with my comment but i think that you know i support lifting the mandate and especially for you know populations like people that cannot hear well, people that, you know, have social inadequacies, children that, um, you know, need to have social cues. I think it's important to, you know, remove them. It's been two years. Um, it's time to move forward. My daughter has never, she's in first grade, she's never been in school without wearing a mask ever. And that's sad to me. Um, so, Thank you for hearing me. I wasn't prepared to speak. I hope I made my point heard. Um, and I appreciate you letting me speak. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I do see Molly Henry has her hand up uh, having, she has spoken once. I think if we could skip to Co, who has yet to have a chance to speak, your microphone is enabled. If you can unmute yourself. Hi, how you doing? Very good. We got you. Hey, right. thanks. So, yeah, I was uh, definitely not prepared to speak, but uh, you know, I feel like I really would like to at least say a few words. Um, you know, I'm a Danvers resident, obviously. I wouldn't be here, and I'm a business owner in town as well. And, um, you know, to me, to see uh, decisions made in the dark of night without any involvement of the town, that then becomes a mandate, which, you know, to give my stance on things, I, I couldn't be further against any kind of a mandate. I don't think that we live in a society that has the ability to tell us what's right for ourselves. I think that given our best advice, I appreciate advice from those that are experts and doing their best to put their best foot forward and working hard to do those things. I appreciate those efforts. What I don't appreciate is, is trying to be told what we're forced to do in a free society, in a, in a country that's supposed to be free and liberty is the most important thing we can safeguard for our future generation, to teach them that they can be told what to do and how to live and then to have the, the results and the data scattered all over the place from all different areas. In the end, we've seen no difference when masking and not masking. And masks, I'm telling you right now, what I do for work, I see masks hanging from every possible area of vehicles and being reused. That's not masks being used properly. A mandate to be mandated just alienates people that believe in freedom. 
And I believe that people have the freedom. If they want to wear a mask, they should wear a mask if they feel safe wearing a mask. And those that don't feel safe wearing a mask or don't feel like it does it, then they should not be forced to do so just to go in society. And I think that, you know, the further we go away from freedom, the more we, we fight with each other about what's right and wrong. And I think that in the end, we shall have the right to choose what's right for us and for our families and for our kids, especially the most. And to end with this, I have my eight-year-old son. I asked him how he feels going to school wearing a mask. And he is the most polite and thoughtful person, would never argue with anybody. He says, I don't even know what my friends look like half the time. That's sad to me that my son doesn't know what his friends look like. And that's the last thing I want to say. Thank you, sir. Um, we have another um, first timer. Uh, I apologize, I don't see a last name, but uh, Lauren, um, if you unmute yourself, you get your three minutes. Hi, can you hear me? We have you. Yes. Perfect. Um, I agree with everything that Co just said. Um, I was born and raised here, been here for 35 years, purchased a house here with my husband. Um, I just want to kind of speak to kind of what I think what Mike was saying earlier, back when the gyms <clears throat> were shut down and when they reopened and we were forced to wear masks. I think I wore masks for I think it was two or three months straight that the mandates were. And I remember when the mandates were lifted that when I was going back to the gym without a mask, it took me over a month to get my cardiovascular level back up to what it should have been. I, it was wearing a mask in the gym was detrimental to my health, which is kind of interesting because the whole point of the mask was to, you know, basically make sure that nobody else got sick. You weren't doing it for yourself. You're supposed to be doing it for, for everybody else. But like Co said, Medical decisions and everything that you do for your own body should be your own choice. We shouldn't be forced to do anything to, for our bodies that somebody else tells us to. No, you know, we don't ask for flu status or HIV status or XYZ status, but everybody wants to know about your, your COVID status and are you wearing a mask? It's everyone should be able to make their own decisions for themselves. I don't know when our society became one of everyone having to be in everybody else's business. And that's all I really have to say about that. Thank you. Um, I think uh, Ms. Henry, um, second time, this looks like we're, um, if you can unmute, I would. Yes, thank gotcha. you. Thank you. I actually just wanted to second Erica's question. If you could share with us the criteria or the parameters that you're using in order to decide whether to keep the mandate versus dropping it, that would help us understand a lot better of you know how this is going and, and what we can expect. If anyone wants to answer that. I think D just fell off the line. I mean, he's oh, gotcha. one other time. I think he'll, he'll likely come right back in. Judith, do you have any thoughts about uh, what we should use as a criterion? Can you hear me? I, yeah, sorry. I go, you know, my data that I grab is from my database that the state sends. And, you know, I know that there's data that the state puts out and, and I was trying to figure out, you know, as far as the vaccines go, I think that that might be where there's a discrepancy where the state differed from what my numbers are. Um, so I, it's, you know, it's, it's not an easy thing as far as we was, you know, getting the data from one particular place versus two places. You know, I, I it's just, it's my database is what it is and, and I can't pull, you know, so for example, the vaccination rates, the, somebody had mentioned that there was, you know, on our website, I think it's 80% versus what I had was 76% for all of our people. You know, one of the things that we have to keep in mind is that my, my database is a little bit more specific because once something goes into the database, a lot of times what ends up happening is somebody might be in there twice. So if, you know, they got vaccinated at 
one place and then there they got vaccinated at another place for their second one if their name is inputted differently even an, a middle initial then that means that they would go in as a, a different person so if it's judith ryan in one place and then judith m ryan in another place or even judy ryan that's going to go in some it's going to go in as two different people so the state at the state level when they're looking at those numbers they're not looking at a, a, a deduplication whereas when it gets to my database i'm able to look at danvers residents and or you know residents and deduplicate it so it, it's really tough when you're pulling from a couple of different sites if that makes any sense yeah and can i'll jump in just a little bit i think you know when we implemented the mandate we talked about what is the criteria for lifting it and i don't we didn't settle on just one criteria because i think there's a lot of factors that we need to consider and that's why we said we would look at it on a weekly basis so looking at what's happening in the town look at what's happening in other towns around us, look at what's happening in the state as a whole, looking at not just cases, not just positivity rate, but cases positivity rate together, along with hospitalizations, um, deaths as well. So um, it's kind of a lot of things coming into play. And I know that's not very helpful with, for folks who are looking for that concrete um, time of when it's going to lift. I feel like we are on the right track right now with the way things are all trending down and all indications show that we should continue to trend down. Um, I just don't know that, I mean, the levels are still so high compared to what we've seen. I'm not sure if it's quite yet where we need to be, maybe trending down a little bit lower. We do look at it every week, maybe, if we said, a, I don't know if the board would be up to this, but maybe look in two weeks and have another meeting to discuss whether we want to lift it. I don't know if people feel that that's too soon, too long, um, but I know that, I apologize, because that doesn't really give you that concrete answer that you're looking for, but we are looking at a bunch of different data points. It, and it is, you're 100% Correct, Sheila. It's you know, it's it's not just one thing that you're looking at, and just not you know, not this particular data, this particular data. It's and that's what public health is. It's looking at the whole picture, not just one aspect or two aspects. Um, and public health is you know, working with other communities. Public health doesn't work if you're just working by yourself in, in one community on its own. You have to work with other communities and in communities around. So it's, it's, again, not just looking at one source, one piece of data. I know Dr. McLaughlin had said he wanted to carve out about an hour for public comments. We're right up against that. We have one person who has their hand up that has not spoken so far. And I think as soon as I said that, I got a second. Um, do you want to hang on for sure. a few more minutes? What sure. is the pleasure of the board? That's fine. Sure. Okay. All right, I will enable... Um, Jane, I apologize for not having a last name. Jane, if you can unmute yourself, you have the floor. Three minutes. Hi. Gotcha. Um, hi. Um, so to kind of piggyback off what Molly was talking about, how do you guys set goals, right, in life, not just with COVID? With anything in life, you set a goal. You make it measurable. You make it attainable. So how can you sit here and tell the public that you don't have a goal for something that you're mandating. It, it just doesn't make sense. How are you, you can look at data all day long. What are you getting from that data? And when the data trends down, it's great. But what happens if the data trends upward again? What happens if there's another spike? Are, I mean, are we just gonna be masked forever, right? You've gotta set a goal. You've gotta set a measurable goal to say, once we hit this, this can happen, right? If I set a goal that I wanna lose 10 pounds, I step on the scale, I write that number down, I do the work, and I lose the weight. That was my measurable attainable goal. What does Danvers have for a plan for a measurable attainable goal to lift these mandates?
Okay, I think there's one other hand raised that we haven't heard from. It's Eric Emerson. Are you just not answering the question? I think the board has the opportunity to respond. I think we're looking for comment more than anything else. Um, I'm going to enable. Mr. Emerson, you are next. If you can mute, uh, unmute your device, you have the floor. Mr. Emerson? Mr. Emerson, I can see you. Uh, you had your hand raised. Did you want to speak? Mr. Emerson. Just not answering the question. I think the board has the opportunity to respond. Yeah, I was. You want to shut that down, honey? Mr. Emerson, there seems to be some feedback, or you're delayed for some somehow. You're on a delay. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. I'm a lifetime Danvers resident, two businesses, one public facing. Uh, obviously, this pandemic has been uh, difficult and devastating to a lot of businesses. I appreciate you all in your service. I know a lot of it's voluntary. Uh, it must be challenging. I think the frustration here is, and I'm glad you opened this up for public comment because I think the the reaction would have been pretty serious if you didn't. Uh, but you're not answering a lot of the questions as they come up. Uh, I guess you can say that. You, this is a public comment. We're allowed to speak our piece. Uh, I think uh, continuing this mandate without very specific objectives or criteria for removing it is just plain wrong. First of all, I, I think the mass mandate accomplishes almost nothing. All right, I travel extensively. I've seen how things are in other parts of the country. Masks, you can point to evidence that say they work. I can point to evidence to say they don't. There's no axioms in any of this. So for you to ask the people of Danvers, and particularly the businesses that you expect to enforce it, to continue this mandate without giving exact and specific reasons why you're doing it and what the criteria is for removing it is wrong. And I think what you're going to see is people just non-complying on their own because they're tired of this. And I think most people know the truth. And the truth is that these, a lot of these things we're doing are just so as saying we did something. And it has to end. It has to end. Um, so I think you should go back and you should establish the exact criteria under which, under which you'll remove these mandates. And if you don't do that, you can expect a lot of pushback from a lot of folks. I know a lot of folks were waiting for this meeting and they were fully expecting you to remove the mandate because it's the right thing to do. It's not accomplishing what it was intended to do. Uh, you can look, look at parts of the country that did not have mass mandates. Their numbers are better than ours. Now you can explore those. You can come up with all kinds of reasons why, uh, you can, but there's no one answer. So you're trying to answer a question that can't be answered you're asking the citizens to do something that at this point, most of them don't believe in and they're not effective. So my suggestion would be, if you wanna continue this, it behooves you to come up with the criteria for what, why you're doing it and when you'll remove it. If you don't do that, then God bless. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, there are Two hands left. We've heard from both of them before. What is the pleasure of the board? I think, I think we give them the three minutes. I, you know. Okay. Very good. Um, Co, I'm just going in the order, the ranked order that they're in. Co, you unmute yourself and you have the floor again. Hi. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, and you know, I kind of would piggyback on what Eric just said. 
um, it is a uh, tall task to ask people to um, mandate or to enforce something without giving any criteria as to why and to when it'll end. And in the end, you know, I've been through this in the public, working with the public for this whole entire pandemic. I'm probably one of the, not the only people, there's many people that didn't get to work from home or anything like that, but I've been into this thing since day one. And to me, the masks don't do anything. There was no difference to me. And if anything, I just see the loss of freedom as being irreversible to our future fabric of our community and how we look at each other and how we view each other. I think people have the right to choose. And I will tell you right now, I'll never tell somebody walking in my business that they cannot wear a mask. If they want to wear a mask, by all means. But I'll tell you right now that you guys need to look at liberty as a huge piece of your decision because you can't get back what you lose like that. Once you get and set that benchmark, it's so hard to reverse it. And our future generations don't need to grow up thinking they can be told what to do whenever the flu goes crazy to shut down their lives. And they've seen that for years now, and it needs to end. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Ms. Cummings? Thank you for allowing me just one more opportunity to speak. Um, first of all, being a nurse, I just want to say I know that your jobs are not easy. Um, you know, it it was something that was thrown in everyone's lap and everyone's been doing the best they can, but now it's been two years. If after two years, to go off what others have said, you do not have criteria for what you're basing your um, direction for the, count, the uh, town off of, I hope that that helps you understand why people are losing faith in the medical establishment and losing faith in their um, elected and or appointed um, members of the community because there is little transparency. And that is what the public wants. They want transparency. They want you to be honest with everyone. They want to see the data. They want to know. They want to educate themselves. So please educate us. Please let us know what you're doing. Please let us know the data that you are looking at. That not just we're looking at different, you know, um, data points and different pieces from here and here. We want the actual data. We want the forms. We want the statistics. We want the data. We are educated people. And the public is asking for your help. And you are not, not being transparent with the public. And I appreciate that you know you you guys have stepped up to the plate but now you need to hit the grand slam and you need to build back that trust with your constituents now's the time so please give us what we're asking for and we will continue to come back every meeting to bring forth our comments we will continue to bring forth the signatures because we are your constituents so please give us what we're asking for. Thank I have you. A question. Um, Thank you. I have heard Thank and you. appreciate what has been said. And it's given me a whole new aspect to this. I wonder if we should meet, plan it right now, to meet in some future date, a week, two weeks, whatever the board pleases, with the idea that we will probably end the mandate if things continue to go well. I agree that this maybe this nebulousness that well it just it depends on how it feels is not going to fly very much. If we can say that the present trend continues for another week, ten days, two weeks, I I think it would be reasonable to, to us to talk about ending it, and that would give somebody a date. Much as I hate to do dates, you're you're, you're implying that the can, the tres, present trend continues. Does that sound reasonable to everybody? Yes, that's yeah. uh, that is uh, that's reasonable to me. I mean, I I can't thank the people who spoke enough uh, on not only their level of decorum, but all the things that they did say. Um, I was moved by some of the comments quite a bit, and I can reassure all of you. And this might sound cliche, uh, it hasn't been easy for any one of us, uh, us on the board. We did struggle with this decision as to what we looked at. 
uh, someone said earlier that 50% of COVID of hospitalizations and are less than 50% are COVID. The problem, and there's a lot of incidental positive, but the problem is if you get to the hospital and for something else, and, and the hospital realizes that you do have COVID. I think I'm getting some feedback there. Can can you yep, hear I think, me? I think, I think I got it. We're good. Yep. Okay. So if the hospital realizes that you do have COVID and you were in a room with three other patients, let's say you have a room with four patients and all of the sudden they realize that one of the patients have COVID, where the other three patients will have to leave that room. Now, even though it's only one COVID patient, they're using four beds pretty much. So it's putting a lot of strain on the on the hospital resources, on 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 the staff. So we we had been looking at all of that, not only the number of cases, the percentage of hospitalizations, um, the positivity rate. I remember back when we were saying that there'll be no mask when we are at 2% positivity rate. Uh, we're talking about 12% now. Um, but I, I concur with, with the chairman that we, we have learned a lot more about Omicron. Uh, we have learned a, more, a lot more about this pandemic. Uh, and, you know, we, we don't, we can have an off cycle um, meeting and look at the numbers that we will provide it. And if at that time we decide that it is not going, it's not going down or what, then we will, we could actually. That's an idea. Solve your problem right there for 50% of the people that have it in the hospital. If you're there for flu like symptoms, get stop, tested. Stop, stop. Oh, she hung it up. Thanks, Joe. I think she shouldn't do that. All right, it's time for bed anyway. Come on, miss. You got I'm sorry, uh, and, I, know, and I think there. I'm getting some feedback there. Yeah, there was some some delay there. I'm not sure that mic was not enabled. So, apologize. Yes. yes. So, so I concur with the chairman that we can we can meet off off cycle to to decide on 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 the mask issue. But I I, I really thank everyone for their comments. And can you guys hear us? Yeah. There's I think we're getting some weird feedback. Um uh, not because I'm not seeing a microphone giving us uh vocals, but we're getting what we're getting them. Um trying to scan the list. Not I'm not sure where that's coming from. I think there are two other hands up. I'm not sure what the pleasure of the board is at this point. Any people that have already spoken? I, we have heard from Jen Cummings. I'm we I don't know that we've heard from Mark Smith. We just heard from Jen Cummings. Yep. Okay. Mr. Smith, I'm going to um, enable your microphone. If you can unmute yourself, you have the floor for three minutes. All right, thank you. Can you hear me okay? Yep, we got you. All right, so I just want to update uh, the uh, public members who waited patiently and, uh, and their, their efforts to try and make sure that there was public comment tonight to address this issue. Um, I don't know if they're aware, I know you are because I emailed it to you guys earlier. Johns Hopkins Institute for Applied Economics recently came out this week, uh, literature review and meta-analysis of the effects of lockdowns on COVID-19 mortality, that's death. So this study looked at employed a systematic search and screening procedure in which 18,590 studies are identified that could potentially address the belief posed. 
After three levels of screening, 34 studies ultimately qualified. Of those 34 eligible studies, 24 qualified for inclusion in the meta-analysis. While this meta-analysis concludes that lockdowns have had little to no public health effects, they have imposed enormous economic and social costs where they have been adopted. In consequence, lockdown policies are ill-founded ill and should be rejected as a pandemic policy instrument. Uh, of these non-pharmaceutical interventions, they discussed mandating face masks. Johns Hopkins University states, there is moderate certainty evidence that wearing a mask probably makes little or no difference to the outcome of laboratory, laboratory confirmed influenza compared to not wearing a mask. They also state wearing a mask may function as a tax on socializing. If people are bothered by wearing a mask, they are less likely to socialize. The studies look at these non-pharmaceutical interventions and face masks was one. It also found no broad-based evidence of noticeable effects on COVID-19 mortality. So it does not reduce death. Wearing a face mask, it's very clear. Johns Hopkins University just released I don't think you, in your, um, Mr. DiGioco, you were disconnected when the question was first asked. Dr. McLaughlin, you asked nurse Judith Ryan to answer, and it was kind of a, a round and round circle. Sheila Laffey, you also responded. It's clear you don't have a matrix. You don't have a guideline. There is nothing that you can review that you can review with statistical significance to tell us that masks are effective at reducing mortality or transmission. And Johns Hopkins is telling us that they don't stop transmission. Masks don't work. There are harms, there are risks, and there are no benefits. And when you have that type of an equation, it's, caused, it's called the Bayesian model. When you have that type of equation where the risks outweigh the benefits, it is not up for discussion, especially when you're talking about medical intervention. You're telling people to cover their face, to not socialize, to not see each other, to not connect, to be socially isolated. And social isolation is torture. So to take it to a level where there is no benefit, there is risk, and it is part of torture, social isolation. They put someone in isolation in prison when they're trying to break their spirit. Are you trying to break our spirit? Is the Board of Health in the town of Danvers trying to break our spirit? There is no reason why you cannot lift the mandate right now, tonight. You can take a vote, you can lift the mandate, and if there is a spike in seven days, 10 days, two weeks, you can reinitiate the mandate then. You do not need to wait until you get testing down and positive cases down to a level that you arbitrarily think. Thank you, that you arbitrarily think with no guidance, no matrix, no information to go on, that your matrix is better than Johns Hopkins that says that there is no difference. It does not stop transmission. It does not impact mortality or doing anything that you're claiming to do. So you can end it tonight. I challenge you to offer a motion, second it, and vote to end the mask mandate tonight. Show the people of Danvers you actually care about their situation. You care about their concerns. You care about their families, their children. You care about their mental health. Mr. Smith, that's three minutes. I, I thank you for your time, and I challenge you to call a motion right now and end the mask mandate. If it spikes in a week or 10 days, then you can discuss the uh, recommended options as a responsible board. You should end it tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I go back to our original plan. Shall we uh, plan on a meeting, a meeting uh, off cycle to discuss this? Um, I agree. Yes. Can we? Can we? Uh, make the statement that our, if things continue to improve as they have been, we would consider ending the mandate. Does that sound all right to, to say? 
Um, what do you mean, Dr. McLaughlin? Do you mean well, we if, should... If, in other words, if the slope continues downward, as it has been for the last couple of weeks, and we meet in two weeks, and it continues to do that, at that point, can we decide that that's, that's enough? I, I agree. I, I agree in one sense that we really do have to have some criteria for this. And I think we will have had three points on the graph, so to speak, that are downward at that point. That's a pretty clear trend. That's, that's if you're reviewing data weekly, why can't you vote next week? Who are we talking to here? I, I second Mark Smith's call for a vote tonight. I'd like Nobody to see you guys respond. Hold, hold on, folks. I'm sorry. Like folks, folks the, the board's we trying to. We want to vote. Trying to weekly. Can you at least respond to Mark Smith officially, each of you, to say whether you'd be willing to vote, vote tonight? Vote tonight. All right, I'm going to end this meeting because I'm not going to listen vote to this. Well, I, I mean, I do think as a matter of procedure, I don't even think that's possible because that wasn't part of the agenda to vote on the mass mandate tonight. So, because if we had put on the agenda that we were voting on the mass mandate tonight, we may have had other residents right. that will that may have come to express uh, uh, either their support or their opposition. Yeah. So, as a as a procedural matter, Mr. Chairman. I don't think we can hold that vote tonight. I agree. Uh, but as far as the date, uh, when we can meet, uh, I know we get the data on Thursday night or Thursday during the day. Uh, we, if you recall, when we discussed the adoption of the mass mandate, it was to see this trend. And we know the data is lack, it lacks behind. You know, it, we have the incubation period and things like that. So. What we see this week is not necessarily what happened this week. It, it, so the hope is that because it's going down and has been going down for the past three weeks, it's definitely going to continue for the foreseeable future. So I'm comfortable with us either meeting the end of next week or two weeks from now. Uh, and and so why are we saying next decide. week? Yeah, I'm so, good. With that. Yeah. Very good. Next week, usually meet at six o'clock. That... Yes. Um, and I guess we should probably, um, at the end of the meeting, allow some public comment. <laughs> We're so popular. Um, seriously, because I mean, we want to hear what's what people are thinking. I mean, I, I do take into account what they think. Uh, and I mean, people do have some valid points. I agree. And there are things that I hadn't considered. Um, and there's some very intelligent, very well thought out reasons for this. And it's one of those places where I think there isn't, it isn't as, it isn't a pure statistical ability to pick something out and say, this is the point at which you do this. It's sort of the art of this whole thing where you have to see what the trend is. Uh, my son one time asked me about that. He was in the military. He said that when you're in the military, you have to have an exit strategy. And I said, well, this isn't the military because the enemy doesn't always act the way we think it will. So I sometimes don't want to overstress the idea that we can pick out exactly what the point will be and we'll do something because there may be extenuating circumstances. So, I mean, I'm perfectly willing to look at it again a week or two weeks, whatever the board pleases. Um, in a week from now, if we yeah. convene and the trend continues yeah. the way we, we've seen it, I'll be comfortable with that. And and again, I, I said it before, I'll say it again. And I mean it. I, I want to thank everyone who spoke. Uh, and I'll urge everyone out there to really um let's let's not try to have the same set of facts too. Uh and if we have a petition going out, you know, let's let's gather this I know people some people say they'll sign whatever comes their way, but if we have correct data and correct facts, I think that it is very healthy because that way we really, we are here to serve the public. We are not here to serve ourselves and we will always listen and take into account what people think and how they feel. So I want to thank everyone. So do we have a motion to adjourn until next Thursday?
Well, I don't know if we adjourn until next Thursday. I think we adjourn and then the meeting will be posted appropriately and uh, and then we will convene at that time. So well, you're, I, you're our official parliamentarian. You know this stuff inside out. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish I, I wish I was a lawyer. I'm not. <laughs> I'm just a father who tried to volunteer some time and energy and whatever I know about this matter you are to, a help, treasure to, to our help my town and I do have kids in the school and I hear what everybody is saying. I'm a town meeting member as well, so we, we're all in the boat together. So uh, I move that we adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, I think it's going to be a whole car vote, uh, Mr. Chairman. Okay, so Jude, I'm sorry, Jude. Want to vote, Judith? <laughs> Sheila? Yes. Me? Yes. I say yes also. Okay. Thank you. Good night. Thank, Thank you, Davis. Bye. Thank you all. Good night. Hello.